first of all, I'd like to thank you all for coming here. Uh, it's a great honour, and it's a great honour to be showing my work here in the Customs House. The, the walls were made for it, and uh, I'd like to thank John and Caroline and all the staff here for, you couldn't leave me to hang this, no, I'm not great at hanging stuff, so <laughs> thanks to John and Caroline for that. But just to give you a little bit of background, um, if I can read my own hieroglyphics. Um, my interest in photography started at around the age of 15, um, and when I started, I started to become visually aware, um, and it was an image in the most obscure of places, I suppose, in a way, in a place called Nevada, which some of you will know, which is now Blue Thunder. Um, and it, was, <laughs> it, was, it, was, uh, it was an image that struck me, and it was always struck, kind of burnt in my head. Um, and it was, it, the reason the image was there was because it was from the Sierra Nevada mountains. And uh, at the time, I didn't know who the author was, but it was an image. It was an image that kind of grabbed me. And uh, you know, when you kind of look back, you wonder what, what, what was it about it? Um, it's it's hard to make that connection. But um, the mountain was Mount Williamson in the Sierra Nevada, and it was a clear and storm, and the light was breaking. So you know, big boulders wouldn't be very. Wouldn't be one of Adams's most beautiful images, but it was one that, that, that stuck with me. Um, I learned more. I learned more about photography as as I went along, um, and my interest my interest grew, and I became aware then of the author Ansel Adams. And Peter Peter spoke about him. He, he was kind of a daddy, and for me, um, for me, he was kind of he was the one I looked to. He, it was his visual language of black and white photography that I responded to. Um, <laughs> Uh, Adams' teachings and writings uh, have been the backbone of landscape photography as we know today. Uh, he was instrumental in setting up uh, a school of photography that I was drawn to, which was called the West Coast Photographic Movement, and where photography had moved away from pictorialism to realism, and it was all about the straight image. Uh, now Adams, even though he was part of that school of, of photography, he used filters. Now we use Photoshop. But even then, he was kind of breaking his own rules as such by using orange or red filters with his black and white photography to enhance, or, uh, to enhance the mood of the photograph. But um, Adams was good enough to get away with that. Like, part of that school as well, in that school of photography, was Edward Weston, Minor White, and Paul Strand. Uh, Adams, Weston, and uh, Minor White would be regarded as the final <coughs> printers. Not alone could they take pictures, but they could print them, and that's what's important. It's not, a, it's not about the camera, you capture the information of the camera, it's about the printing. And Adams is a great quote, and it's, it's like, the negative is the score and the print is the performance. That, that was it. So if we pass the negative round to many photographers, they would all come back with their own in interpretation of that negative. So I was drawn to that school of photography, that West Coast movement. It, it also inspired artists like George O'Keefe and Morris Graves. And, um, you know, I've been drawn to black and white photography. That was, the, that was kind of... It, that was, for me, that was my mother tongue. That was the language of photography that I related best to. Even though I shoot loads of color, and color has, color is a great place, but it's, it's, it's uh, black and white. Black and white for me evokes just that emotion that, that, and, uh, that, that I've been looking for, and I'm just more satisfied with that palette. Um, I then, as a photographer, went off studying letter Kenny to study visual uh, graphic design and visual communications, and always carried out my work through photography, and moved back to Westport in 2000 um, to, to set up as a photographer. It was, I literally had a burning passion in my stomach. I had to do it. You know, I just had, I owed it to myself to do it. Always wanted to, but hadn't the confidence at the time, and then, then went for it. Um, I wanted to capture the same emotion and have that same and have that same visual connection that I felt looking at the images made by these great photographers. You know, um, to use a quote by um, Audrey Caldwell, she's an American photographer, said, 
To see in colour is a delight for the eye, but to see in black and white is a delight for the soul. And that's, that's, that's a quote that is always kind of um, resonated with me. Um, I met, I, I came across the work of Ron Rosenstock. I've never met him, it was early 2000. I seen these pictures and I says, I have to meet this man because his style of photography was like, the, it was like seeing that image that I had seen in Nevada at the time. It evoked that same emotional response and um, I had to meet this man. So ever since, we've been friends since 2000 and um, uh, we, we, he, I was delighted when he, when he wrote the, the foreword to the book. Uh, he's, he's, he's always been a great inspiration and his philosophy and ethos of photography is something that has kind of grown, grown within me. Um, it was through this that I met Paul Caponegro, who would be regarded as one of America's foremost landscape photographers. And I, 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 I'm still in communication with Paul. Paul doesn't have a tele, radio, computer, he uses a typewriter, he'll send you a handwritten letter, and uh, he's just, he lives in the woods in Maine, and he shoots his photography there. And I had the pleasure of going up, photographing in Maine, and hanging out with Paul for a bit in, in, in his dark room. Um, if you haven't seen his work, check him out. He's, his, his, his work sells at Sotheby's. He's, to, to meet somebody, to meet somebody, of the same ilk as Ansel Adams, that they all they all knew one another. They were part, you know, they're part of that last lineage to photographic history that, that we kind of know today. Um, so Paul kind of taught me the old ways. I shoot. I, while I do shoot digital, I shoot a plate camera like you would. The design of the camera hasn't changed since the eighteen fifties. It's the same type of camera, they're just a little bit more modern. It's a, it's a negative with a lens in front of it and a box. And that's literally, that's what, and your image is projected upside down. I still shoot it, not enough. Didn't take it with me to, to uh, America because uh, it's a very slow process and it's a very, to photograph in that way is a very meditative process. It's, it's you're really slow in your work down. It's a lovely way to work. I just had too much work to do in a short space of time when I was going to America uh, to, fo to photograph this. Um, it's, look, it's been a huge privilege knowing these two photographers. Uh, they've been a huge influence in their work. Um, how this show came about was uh, in 2000, Ron says to me, do you fancy coming with me for a few days to Death Valley? I'm running a tour over there with a couple of people. And I thought, Okay, that'd be great. I'd love to that. I'd do that. So I started looking. If I'm going to Death Valley for three days or four days, I'm going to. Uh, if I'm going that far, I'm going to America. I'm going to go everywhere I can possibly go within within the space of time that I had. Um, so I uh, Ron's trip didn't Ron's trip didn't happen. He didn't have enough signups for it. So I said, I mean, I was going anyways because I had so much planning done. The trip itself, uh, when I got back with the car, when I left, I thought I had it roughly calculated at in around about 3,000 miles. And when I was leaving back the car, he zapped it. I said, how many miles did I do? He said, you've done 4,000 miles. So there was a lot of driving in that space of time. Um, so for me, I wanted to go and photograph the landscape that inspired me in my youth. And it was my kind of personal kind of a personal kind of um, mission really to go there and photograph, photograph that landscape that has inspired me. The American Southwest has been the ideal subject matter for filmmakers and photographers going back as, as, as far as Timothy O'Sullivan um, at the end of the 1800s. <coughs> Timothy was an Irish photographer, a war photographer actually, photographed some of the most gruesome War, he changed, he changed war photography. Uh, he came from Cork at the, the, the famine with his family in 1840, went over, went over to America, to Washington, assisted, he wasn't a photographer before he left, he was only a young fella. He assisted an American, Irish American guy over there, Brady, who was a war photographer. And well, even though Brady was the boss, well, Sullivan's images are probably the most prolific of their time. 
so the southwest has always been has always been a place that has kind of fascinated me from watching John Wayne movies with my grandfather all those years ago to um, to the images that that inspired inspired me to become a photographer. Um, it's a place of unspoiled wilderness, and it's um, it's a place where there's a lot of clean light. The images down the back, the only two color pictures in the, in the exhibition, are from a place called Death Valley. They're on the east side of Death Valley, and uh, it's from a ghost town. I hadn't planned to go there, it's a place I just came across. And we visited during the day, um, and I said, right, I'm coming back here at night. I was really lucky the time of year, at the time of the month that I was there, because of the phase of the moon, you need, you need a new moon to photograph. You, see. you know, some nights you go out and you see the stars banging, and then other nights you go out and you don't see the stars. Well, I was lucky that I was in a place that is recognized as an international dark sky place. There was no moon, there was loads of Milky Way, and those buildings were crying out to be photographed. So I like painting them with a flashlight. They're 25 second exposure, and that's how, that's how they're done. I painted the building with a flashlight. I could paint a wall, and I uh, and I made the calculations for the Milky Way, and that's that's how those were created. Um, Death Valley is an amazing place, and there was a lady here I met her earlier on, a friend of Kitty's, and she's she's been there. Uh, the images at the back of the play, the back of the room there are from a place called the Racetrack, and there was a guy with me, a friend of Ron's, we both just happened to be in Death Valley for, uh, at the same time, and when Ron's trip didn't go ahead, he says, do you know what, because I'd met Mitch before when we were up with Paul, and he says, do you know what, the two of you guys are going to be in Death Valley at the same time, why not hook up? So, I'd never really, I'd only met Mitch, we hooked up, um, and he was a bit, he was a he wasn't sure about um, going to the place called the racetrack. It's, uh, it's a place you don't go on an ordinary vehicle. If you get stuck out there, it's going to be three days before they come for you. There's no phone. It's a 27 mile, 27 mile trip, but it takes, it takes a good two hours driving, that 27 miles. So I was going home. Mitch was a bit, we don't know about that now, you know. Uh, <laughs> I said, Mitch, I'm going anyways. You can come, you can stay, you can do what you want, but I'm going. So I says, I went up to check out this four off road, uh, this off road vehicle company, um, and we're going to hire a vehicle and go out there. It's, and that's why I'm here for that. So when we got up there, and I'm chatting away to the people in the, uh, the, the they were actually, I think they were called Gallagher's, but um, they said, oh, no problem, we'll give you a satellite beeper, you just beep us if you get stuck, here's extra, here's extra inflatable stuff. And so Mitch then was getting a little bit more, he says, I'm coming, I'm coming, right? <laughs> so uh, we just got out there, it was a good, big drive, but it's, it's, one of these, it's one of these obscure places, yeah, kind of have to make the effort to get to. We just got there, by the time we got out there, we just got the last little bit of light. I met a couple of friends out there that are just, even when I look back, hopefully, thank God, in 30, 40 years, uh, they'll always, they'll, they'll always, they'll always be really strong for me. Um, the other place then I went to was um, I went, which. We were meant to go to Arizona, and Mitch wasn't, he'd been there, wasn't too keen, so we decided we'd go to Utah. So we drove nine hours, took it in turns every two hours driving, drove to Utah, uh, without shooting images one morning. We left about three o'clock in the morning. We thought we'd be there first, because we had three or four other photographers in the same area. Um, driving back that morning, we went off the road. I was reading the book and I turned around and said, we still here, you know, because literally it was a place called Canyonlands and if you were to hand pick a place to go off the road, you couldn't have hand picked a better place. Um, so yeah, that was a bit of an experience. It was a real, it was a real, it was a bit of an eye opener in a way because like, it just shows you how, how one minute you could be here and another minute you're not. 
there wasn't even a scratch in the car. Not a scratch. So uh, that was that was a little experience in it, which was which was kind of it, it stuck with me for a little while. I was a bit shook after it, you know. But for me, anyway, it's look, it's all about the light and being in that creative space. Um, it's one thing, kind of just taking a picture. You know, we take a snap. Everybody, we you know, we take we take pictures of the iPhone. It's another thing to be in a space and to actually make a photograph. It's a, it's a different experience, and thankfully, I didn't know what kind of an experience I was going to have in America. It was very daunting. I planned the trip so much as I could plan it, but then again, the rest was whatever happened. Um, basically, um, being behind the camera allows me to connect with the subject, and most importantly, connect with yourself. You have to be you're connecting. It's, if you're sitting out on your own, if you ever go for a walk or you're out on your own for a long time, it gives you a lot of time to gives you a lot of time to think to yourself. So photography gives you photography gives you that um, it gives you me that space uh, to be with myself and and create these images. Um, the essence of the, na the national parks is that everybody can find their own meaning and solace within these within these designated spaces. That's what the idea of these national parks. Um, I hope this expo is a space for everyone to find their own meaning and their own little bit of solace within the images. Um, I would like to thank John. Um, the staff here again at the Customs House for doing such a wonderful job hanging the work. As I said, I do not hang even pictures at home. I have to phone my friends. I'm just a disaster when it comes to hanging pictures. Okay? I have more holes in the wall. Uh, so I do I'm not great at that kind of stuff. So I would like to say that we, we were here there, we were here um, on Tuesday and we were placing the work and moving it around and I have to say thank you guys for doing such a wonderful job. Uh, this, this exhibition. Uh, this, this space allows the work to breathe. Um, I'd like to thank Ron Rosenstock for writing the introduction to the book. It was a, a huge honour that, that Ron wrote the book. And uh, also to Ian Visavoric uh, for um, writing the afterword to the book. He encapsulates I suppose my little pilgrimage to America beautifully. Um, to Ian Coffey, he's not here, but Ian, my wife and I started designing the book, and Ian kind of took it by the reins and gave it that little bit of je ne sais quoi that it needed. Uh, so I'd like to thank Ian for that. I'd like to thank Damien Cashin, Doreen Mulroy. Um, and the two Davids, David in production and David the printer, for his patience as I uh, inspected the, 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 the printing process. And I'd like to really, really thank them for finishing the way they finished the book beautifully. I hadn't planned on doing a book, which was just going to be a catalogue. And then I says, well, sure, look, if you want that fairly nice, I'll do a book. So I've done a limited edition book, so 500 copies of the book. There's more images in the book, I had to leave some out. 499. <laughs> <laughs> um, I decided I'd do a book just to kind of mark it, and there's nice registered ISBNs. And all the, they're, they're all edition on the back, so you know the number of the book. They're 25 euros. John will look after that. Um, the, all, the art, all the art is for sale, and if people want to buy stuff on the drip over, over a period of time, John will facilitate that. Um, I'd like to thank Peter Hines for the honour and for his beautiful words. I was really humbled. I didn't know that I was going to break down in tears or whatever, but it was, look at it, really, really thank you, Peter. It was humbling to, to, to the, the few words you spoke about me, and, and a great honour and delighted that you, uh, that you opened the exhibition for me. And last but not least, uh, <clears throat> my wife Emma Jane. Um, because without, 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 without her, it wouldn't be possible. We have three small kids. For me to go gallivanting for three weeks, you know, to take pictures is, you know, it's a big undertaking. And um, she's been a huge inspiration. She's the one that's 
that, dri that drives me on. And uh, I, it's the first time I get to uh, publicly acknowledge that. And without her, it wouldn't happen. So I really. Oh. <laughs> and to my little kids for being patient, because three weeks is a long time in the life of a child. And to my mother and my brother for being such a support to me over the years. Um, thank you. Thanks for everything. And thank you all for making the effort to come here tonight. I'm delighted with this exhibition. It's by far my strongest work to date, and there's more to come. Thank you. Thank you.